Throughout the 1970s, BMW continued to be very successful in the dirt, which led to the development of new off-road designs. At the time, small single-cylinder two-stroke Honda and Yamaha bikes were creating an enduro craze in the USA. But BMW envisioned a new machine with a four-stroke engine and a suspension that was capable of riding over long distances without strain. And so the idea of the large, comfortable endurance bike was born. In 1978, the Italian company Laverta developed a prototype for BMW. It was known as the GS800. The same year, BMW's test department built a prototype for cross-country motorsports events. It was created without formal BMW approval and featured a single-sided swing arm known as a monolever. The following year, a team of six BMW factory riders competed in several major off-road events. They were riding a GS800 prototype with better suspension, a lighter frame, and an 800cc motor assembled from various BMW parts. The next year, BMW sent two factory teams to the major races and won several titles with the GS800. With these victories fresh in mind, on January 1, 1979, a new management team at BMW was presented with the GS800 prototype as the basis for a new production model. It combined components from the R80 road model with newly developed elements. A lighter rear end and larger front wheels formed the basis of its off-road credentials. But the most outstanding innovation was a single swing arm on the rear wheel. The concept was approved and the development of the GS went into high gear. Initial tests of the new GS were performed in Ecuador in January 1980. During the trip, the motorcycles and riders had to prove themselves in extreme climatic conditions. By that fall, just 21 months after the initial approval of the concept, BMW's first production Enduro was ready to be released to the public. Introduced to the world on September 1, 1980, the R80 GS was a groundbreaking machine. It featured a powerful and refined two-cylinder boxer engine with a generous 800cc displacement and enough space to carry two people with luggage. The single-sided swing arm was a first on any production Enduro. It was the largest, the fastest, and the lightest bike in the Enduro class. BMW's press release called it the most convincing two-in-one motorcycle to date, noting that it was built as the ultimate leisure time instrument for every situation. Motorod called it the best street motorcycle BMW ever built. The archetypal adventure motorcycle, the BMW R80 GS, was eminently suited for long distance travel under a variety of conditions. While the press was generally convinced about the bike's off-road capabilities, others were eager to see how it would perform in a real race. They got their chance when BMW entered the infamous Paris to Dakar rally. In a race where most bikes don't even finish, BMW's reliability and performance set the bar in 1981. The company not only had the highest percentage of finishing motorcycles, but in the hands of Hubert Auriol, also won first place by a full three hours with the BMW R80 GS. After the Paris Dakar, there was no doubt that the GS was as capable off the road as it was on the road. With its 800cc engine, drive shaft, and single swinging arm, the R80 GS quickly became the ideal motorcycle for global vagabonding, and it opened up a new previously untapped market, adventure touring. Motorcycle adventure touring were probably born with the motorcycles. You know, it's about exploring new territories, heading out in one direction and see where you come, and with a bike, the road doesn't need to be perfect. In 1982, Helge Peterson left his home in Norway and rode into the history books. 
His two-wheel companion was an R80GS named Olga. I think it first hit me that I was on a journey when I arrived in Africa. No, I know I had left the known behind me and ahead of me it was just the unknown. What started out as a dream to see Africa turned into a 10-year odyssey around the world through more than 80 countries. Along the way, Helge Peterson became the first motorcyclist to ride the length of the Pan American Highway through the infamous Darien Gap. The Pan American Highway have a missing link of 80 miles and I chose to take the bike to it. I thought it was going to be easier. We were following Indian tracks I had 40 yards of rope and pulleys, and to get through, I had to pull them up the hills and down deep, steep embankments of the rivers. I fell over with my motorcycle. I broke my my wrist or my uh, bone in a wrist here. Later, I broke my rib. It took us 20 days to go those 80 miles. Probably the hardest I ever done in my life. When his journey ended in 1992. The R80GS that had taken him around the world found a home at the BMW Museum in Munich, and Helge Peterson rode away on a new BMW R1100GS.